All right, shallow one. I'm going to start by giving all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Mahakodash. Yahweh being the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, by Hashem, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai being the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, who the word anyone calls Jesus. And Mahakodash being the Holy Spirit that speaks through us so that we can divide this word correctly and directly. Shalom, meaning peace. We also want to give double honors to the apostle and other the great millstone. We want to say Shalom to the whole collect out there pushing this word in truth. And sincerity striving their best to do this right in the eyes of the Lord. But in this lesson, we're just going to go into uh, the mentality that we should have in this life. Right? We shouldn't be, we shouldn't give ourselves over to the pleasures of this life. Right? We shouldn't give ourselves fully over to it. Right? But uh, you can start that First Corinthians if you want. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is First Corinthians chapter, um, chapter ten. Uh, what is it, 8 and 10? Uh, 6 and 12. Oh, 6 and 12. Sloppy. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6 and verse 12. It says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Right, and, and within this truth, within this ministry, with, uh, within uh, this walk of faith that we have, the Lord gives us Certain liberty, certain liberties, right? But uh, what did the scripture just say? It said, "I will not be brought unto under the power of any," right? So, so we we're to to be mindful of how we move and take heed to the, the things that we're allowing ourselves to take part in, walking in this faith, right? In in this uh, on this type of that we're walking, because that's essentially what it is, right? You can, you can read about uh, you can read about in uh, Second Ezra seven. I'm gonna grab it real quick as well. This is uh, 2nd Ezra 7, and um, I'm going to start at 1. It says, and when I had made and ended up speaking all these words, there was sent unto me an angel which had been sent unto me the nights before. And he said unto me, up, Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great but the but put the case the entrance were narrow and like a river when I mean so like it says who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it if he went not through the narrow how could he come into the broad right and ultimately this is uh you keep reading down is going into a parable the that sea being the kingdom of heaven right and that path being that pathway that we need to take to get to it right going into that straight gate I believe Matthew 7 goes into that straight gate, right? But uh, I'm going to jump down to uh, verse. I'll just keep reading. It says, there is an, also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things, right? Speaking about the kingdom of heaven. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water, and only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there, there at once, right? And this is the pathway that we need to take at, at, uh, as, as as children of the Lord, right, going into the kingdom of heaven, right, you read down and it says, this is Israel's portion, right, it spoke about how narrow that path was, and this is the mentality that we need to have on the way to the, uh, on our way to the kingdom, right, we, it said that there was, a, it was like the path, fire on one hand, and, and the water, water on the other, kind, right, so it's, it, you were on a pathway like that, you're going to take heed, right, you're going to be careful of the steps that you take, you're going to be meticulous with the steps you take, and you're not going to do certain things that'll make you, uh, all the balance. Mm -hmm. So so that's what we need to have in this truth is a balance between uh, uh, this flesh and walking in the flesh and, and, and doing what you do in this. Uh, uh, walking in the spirit. Yeah. Being yeah. more in the spirit than in the flesh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we can't let it. our flesh overcome us. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to rule our, we got to rule off our flesh. Yeah. You know, like the brother say, like the car will say, man, martial law on the mind. You know, we, we our body got to be a slave unto our spirit, not our spirit a slave unto our flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, 
we're going to fall off of the selection. No, you got it. And just bringing back to that analogy, or else we're going to fall off of that path if we got our, our flesh uh, or our flesh uh, moving us with it, wherever it wants us to go. Most yep. likely. No, no, you good. Um, I'm going to grab that. Um, oh, what was the next one? Uh, I got, uh, you, you hit that Matthew 7 and 13, Bob Kasha, to link with what he had. Because I know he, he quoted that chapter, but. Yeah, you do, it's, you do the 13 and 14. All right, this is Matthew chapter 7 and verse uh, uh, verse 13. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for mm -hmm. wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go uh, go in thereat. Yep. A lot of people is, is following after that, that, that ungodly, wicked way, which is that, that path that leadeth to destruction. Mm -hmm. But that straight gate, when you go into that word straight, it goes into um path of difficulty. Path of difficulty, uh, uh like strict. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real strict. It's, it's narrow, and that's the pathway to salvation. That's the path. That's the steps of our Lord. Yeah. Well, it says uh, it says through much tribulation, they uh, they should enter into the kingdom. So we have to go through much tribulations, much afflictions. You know, uh, to enter into to where we need to go. You know, to to get to the goal. You know, because mm -hmm. it goes back to the, the precept that he was reading. Because he says Israel portion. Mm -hmm. Then we got to go through the danger, the, the danger to come. Yep. You know, we got to go through that. Mm -hmm. You know, like like you mentioned in that precept to get to the kingdom. So mm -hmm. we have to go through this. Now, Verse fourteen. So uh, like I was gonna say, a part of that strictness, right? He, he read that word. Or he mentioned that word straight. A part of that strictness is denying ourselves in certain areas. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, Shai even said, he said, if uh, if any man be a servant of me, he, ha uh, he has to deny it. <clears throat> deny yeah. himself. Yeah, he has and, to deny himself. And when you go into the word deny, it goes into basically losing uh, uh, its own self-interest. Yep. What we paraphrasing? Losing the sight of one's own self-interest. Mm -hmm. right? we, we, we about our father's business in this thing. If, if our pleasures, our desires... Is making us go off the path. Is making us not have our eyes single to the goal at hand. That's that's when we need to cut it off. Cause that's uh, if we let it overtake us, that's fall. That's us falling into the water. Us falling into the fire. Yeah. Right? And we're not. We 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 strive to be that elect. Right? He said that we're not of them that uh, draw back, back into condition. tradition, mm -hmm. but we believe to the saving of the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said the Lord said those that draw back, He ain't gonna have no pleasure uh, pleasure in them. Yeah. He said they're not fit for the kingdom. You know, we praying and hoping to be worthy mm -hmm. to, 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 to make it, man. Yep. And it starts now. It starts by denying and, and killing this flesh now. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can hit that 14. Oh, verse 14, it says, <clears throat> Matthew 7 and 14, it says, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Which is our Lord, because he said he's the door. He said, I am the, 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 the way, the truth, mm -hmm. and the light. Mm -hmm. What we paraphrasing? Mm -hmm. No man coming unto the Father but by me. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, I'm at the door. You know, but go ahead. It says there, it says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Only few. Because the scriptures tell us only a few men like thee know these things, man. It said, uh, this world was made for many, but the world will come for few. Mm -hmm. And we're praying and hoping to be part of that few, part of that remnant. Yep. It says, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. Yep. <clears throat> but that was it on that. Yeah, uh, I think Jay wanted that Luke. Yeah, this uh, St. Luke chapter 21 and verse 34. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unawares. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's what we got to do. We got to take heed to ourselves so that we're not overcharged. With surfeiting and cares of the life, just like just as that scripture just said, right? You, you go into that word surfeiting, it goes into uh, and this is the etymon online, the verb for surfeit, right? It says indulge or feed to excess, mm. right? So we can't do that. We can't and we can't uh be satisfying our our our, our flesh in, in excess, right? And that's just how it is, right? This is a part of the straight gate, right? We have to deny ourselves from certain things, right? Certain ways, of, uh, certain ways of thinking, like all. Oh, old ways that we used to think right and, and and old mentalities that we used to have right we have to we have to we have to deny that right and it, this is all a part of this walk mm -hmm. but uh, um you can read that piece up again so I can. come on this uh same Luke chapter 21 and verse 34 and take heed to yourselves least lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness 
and cares of this life and so that they come upon you unawares yeah because the scripture says uh love not the world neither the things that are in the world um matter of fact let me just grab it because i'm gonna uh, <laughs> butcher it i already know uh, i believe it's uh first john I guess it's a it's a point in there. Um, it's a lot of people. Give me a second. First John two and fifteen. First John two and fifteen. The water. Yep. This uh, first John two and fifteen. It says um, it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world. It says if any man love the world the the love of the Father is not in him. It says for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. Um, it says, "And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever." All right, so we're not supposed to love and and give ourselves over to the things that's of this world. It's, it says that it's uh, the things that are of the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, are right, the pride of life. All right, we don't want to get uh, 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 basically caught yeah too caught up. You know, in, 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 in the things that are of this world, man, you know, uh, uh, whether it's uh, partying or over over consuming the alcohol, um, whatever your vice. Yeah, is whatever. Right. Yeah, whatever your your, uh, uh, your desire is, you know, whatever your lust is that that can knock you off your course. Yeah, yeah, knock you off your square. You know, we don't want to give ourselves over to that. You know, we want to make sure that we're examining ourselves. That's what uh, yeah. that's what it says in Sirach. Sirach 18, it says, uh, examine ourselves before the day of judgment, mm -hmm. you know? So it's a, no, you could, I was going to say, you know, it's just a constantly, uh, constant, uh, examination that we have to keep on, uh, keep doing, you know? Right, because that old man, he, he be trying to creep back up, you know, and the demons, they be coming back stronger, man. Right. That's why we got to put Ephesians 6. We got to put on the whole armor. Oh yeah, how about Shemiah was shot, man, to, to, to withstand in this battle, man, withstand in this war. Right. And they said it said uh in that back in that Luke twenty one it spoke about you, you need to do these things unless you be caught up uh caught up in that evil day. Hey, you still holding that? Mm -hmm. Can you reread it again? Come on, verse uh the same Luke chapter twenty one verse thirty four again. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunk and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Right. So we we gotta we got to be mindful and take heed to the way we moving unless the day of the Lord come upon us unawares right we will be uh, caught up with the uh, caught up in this destruction if we stay in uh, stay in uh, the mentality of pleasuring yourself too yeah. much if we get too comfortable basically that's why the scripture says rise and depart for this is not our rest it's not the time for us to get comfortable within this place because it's polluted and that yes. and it says that it's destroy us with a sore destruction yeah you know so we can't get too complacent or get too comfortable with with the things that we're dealing with uh, on this side, man, you know, brothers got jobs and families, you know, so on and so forth. Of course, we have to deal with certain things, but we can't give ourselves over too much uh, onto those things, man. You know, we got to always make sure that our eyes single, you know, make sure our eyes uh, is on the prize, man, the, the, the true goal, man, you know. Uh, this, this is uh, second. Second Timothy. Yeah, yeah I had that too, bro. You, you just read it. I'm, I'm not in the right spot. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, No man that war entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. All right, and that's what we are, man. We're soldiers for Yahweh Shemal Shah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it says that no man war entangleth himself, because if you're out in war, or you can't get, you can't be, <laughs> if you're out in war, you can't be caught up in, uh, in things that's, you know, uh, going on at home or, you know, uh, you dealing with these different problems. You know, you're gonna get you're gonna get caught in a misfire, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna get thrown off your off your square. You know, so now you got it. Slacky, bro. It's, uh, <laughs> it's it. popped in my mind uh, uh, when uh, that law speaking about us going to war, right? Uh, uh, like if you had a woman that you would just marry, or, or you you, you, you just built a house. Mm -hmm. Or if you was uh, fearful, yeah, you, know, you gotta stay back, mm -hmm. stay at home, right? Because we had to, uh, uh, we had to be at, well, us as warriors have to have our mind on the war, right? We we can't be come, we can't be caught up on uh, caught up behind enemy lines, right? And that's where we are, right? We in these bodies of flesh, right? these bodies of death, right? Chains of darkness. Uh, the scripture we walk on the battlements, yeah.
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every, basically every side. Yo, what say you said? Uh, Satan as a devouring lion? Uh, yeah, seeking, 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 seeking whom he may yeah. devour. As a crouching lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, we, we got we got enemies, right? We got this. This isn't. This is this is a war, right? That's why the Lord told us to put on that that armor, like uh, the brother had mentioned earlier in that uh, Ephesians six. I think he said it was mm -hmm. right. So we at, we at war, so we have to be attentive to that, mm -hmm. right? We have to take heed. Yeah, we are uh, we are warring on in different aspects too. You know, we're warring with uh, uh, with the devil. You know, we're warring with uh, with ourselves. You know, it says that this is the condition of the battle that man must fight. Yeah. You know, and we have to constantly keep fighting, man. This says that uh, that basically how the Lord, uh, basically how uh, what it says that it should try you at every moment. Uh, what is what is man that you should try? Him yeah, what moment? is man that you that he should try you at, at every moment? You know, we're through paraphrasing, but hey, we're, we're getting tried at every moment. It says uh, that Satan that is uh, desire to desire to sift you, you yeah, as wheat, yeah. which is to try one's faith. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, so, shake your faith. Yeah, that's when you to, 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 to make sift. you fall out. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you go into the word sift, is it goes into uh, basically the overthrow of one's faith. You know, and and that's what Satan is out to do, man. He, he's out walking throughout the earth. You know, we just quoted the precept, you know, that Satan is a war and lion seeking, seeking whom he may devour. All right, the scripture says he's seeking it. Uh, he, he, he sit in lurking places, uh, seeking to destroy the poor, to devour the poor, roughly paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. So if we, hey man, we, we, we gotta put on our armor, but we gotta trust in the Lord, man. You know, we, we can't give ourselves over to our fleshly desires. You know, we gotta constantly be in the spirit. Yeah, well. Constantly, yeah, yeah, to the best of our ability. Not so lucky. I was just gonna make mention too, because that's what the scripture says that the that the flesh let uh, the flesh fight to get the spirit the spirit against the flesh. They both contrary one to another. Mm -hmm. You know, just going back to showing so how we're gonna fight. Because mm -hmm. it says so, you wanna do the things that you would. You know, so it's a constant battle. You know, the Lord is a man of war. We gotta fight. We 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 warriors. You know, God is. It said. Uh, Y'all know where Sauer says we war not against flesh and blood, but against. I was just thinking about that because it's both. I was about. Spirit, man. I, I should have grabbed it though. I was. I thought about it. Man, I'm not wording it right or something. I know the uh, principalities. Oh man. It's lucky. Uh, here we go. Why about you now? Shall I say Second Corinthians ten and three? It says Second Corinthians ten and uh and three. It says for we for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the Most High to the pulling down the strongholds. Right. And this this uh, our weapon uh, is going are going back to this word. Uh, now Ephesians six is speaking. We might as well grab that Ephesians six, but uh, I, I, we can grab that. Uh, we can just grab it. And I'll finish this off after that. This um, this Ephesians six and chapter. I mean, so like this this Ephesians chapter six and verse eleven. It said, "Put on the whole armor of Yahweh, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil." Trickery, mm -hmm. yeah. So we get the, the devil. He he's he's crafty, right? He's subtle, right? He can put different things within your mind, right, to make you move in the wrong way. So we have to have this armor on. But but uh, you can keep going. Uh, verse twelve. It says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places." It says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Mm -hmm. right, we, in a, we in a spiritual battle, we need this spiritual armor, right? This mm -hmm. spiritual armor is tougher than anything that this world has to offer. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a spirit and not flesh. Yeah, it can't be broken. Mm -hmm. It can't be, can be penetrated. You know, this armor that we have, which is these words, these scriptures, you know, uh, what it says that it's the uh, anchor of the soul. You know, uh, it's basically talking about because uh, this is what this this is how we obtain faith. You know, through hearing these words, man, the, uh, through through the uh, through the afflictions that we go through. You know, 
uh, through the sifting, you know. But if we're uh, leaning, leaning upon you, how about Shimei Shai? It increases our faith and it increases our hope, all right, which makes our, uh, our, our shield stronger, you know. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Mm -hmm. Like you see, you see through the word, you see the different things that the Lord has brought his men through, right? It, it, has any trusted in the most high and been forsaken? Right? The Lord, the Lord, uh, we see through the, throughout the scriptures how the Lord will give every needful thing in due season, right? We'll see how in, through the scriptures that we, uh, uh, we'll be able to keep our mind upon the Lord so that we're able to have perfect peace, right? So this is all through the, uh, through the spirit and power how about Shemuel Shah and the understanding gives us through these scriptures, right? And it gives us the, the mentality, the movement. So that we're not moving according uh, to the ways of this world, but we, we uh, conform to the ways of Yahweh by Shem Al Shai, conform to his image, right? So that we're not destroyed with this world. But uh, we got the Ephesians 6. Come, it says, uh, verse, verse 14, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, Take it the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Mm -hmm. right, so this is our armor in this spiritual battle that we're in, right? But uh, this is going all going back to this word, right? All going back to uh to the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimei right? You got something? Yeah, I was going to finish on this Second Corinthians. Yeah. This uh back in Second Corinthians, uh, ten and four it says, "For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal." But mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself, exalted itself against the knowledge of the most high and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of a Mashiach. Uh, and this isn't the uh, scripture I was looking for. But no, that's that's heavy within itself, though, because that's what this word is doing. You know, it's bringing down all those imaginations that people thought was high. You know, Esau, Edom. You know, also that image. You know, a Serapis. You know, all those things is being brought down, man. The Lord bringing all these things down. Everything is going to be obedient to your how about Hashem was shot. But the remnant is the one that's going to is, is is doing it now. Those, those that chosen. It's going to cut off the flesh. That's going to reap the things of the spirit. It's a good, that's going to feed the spirit. Oh, that's the spirit. Let me grab it. No. Is it, another thing, though, is the spirit is that Ephesians 6. Is that what, what I'm looking for is, is at the end of, uh, I mean, lower down in that Ephesians 6, talking about that army. Uh, uh, I keep reading. Kind of Bible show. Uh, this uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. It says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword. Of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching down too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Mm -hmm. What verse you mean? No, that's 18. Uh, if you jump to verse uh, 12, I'll show. Go, go up? Yeah. So go back up? Yeah. Uh, verse 12, it says, So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping, but uh, kind of, that's that's what it is. That's what we're wrestling against, right? And this is why we have to keep our mind and our body in subjection while we're here on this on, on this earth, right? This is why we can't give ourselves over to the to the pleasures of this life because we're we're warring. Against uh, these these this spiritual wickedness and this the spiritual wickedness that's going on in this place, which is heavy, which is uh, which is a strong enemy, right? Our, our flesh, our, our, our moving according to these words is, is opposite of what our flesh wants to do all the time. So we have to we have to put up that fight always, right? Uh, Romans seven speaks about that struggle against uh, sin that uh, that Paul always put up, right? This is the same mentality that we need to be in, right? It's the same struggle that we need to put up. Right, it's a uh, same fight that we need to put up is 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 uh, to to so we can escape this place and 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 be in the good graces of the Lord. But uh, you got what you, you guys got what you got. All right, this is uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, and um, I start at verse six. It says, "Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night." But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on a breastplate of faith and love, 
and and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Uh, yep, and that's the point, man. You know, just putting on the breastplate of faith, man. Just keep keeping these words, you know, within us because we are going to go through some some tough times. We're we're, I mean, even right now, we're dealing with brothers are dealing with certain situations that they're going through, certain afflictions, you know, that that may seem you know harsh and stuff like that. But we have these words to comfort us, man. We have these words to to keep us stable, man. And that's what it says wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of that times. And um, I got it right here yeah. because it goes back to what you just read. Because you said hope in south, it said hope and salvation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, Isaiah chapter thirty-three and verse six. It says, "And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation." The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Right. And it says the fear of the, of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Shah, is his treasure. Because that's what it all starts with, man. It all starts with the fear of Yahweh Bashim Shah. You know, what keeps us in a, uh, uh, in a balance. You know, it keeps us balanced from uh, uh, swerving off to the left or swerving off too far to the right, man. You know? Because when, when you go into the stability of that times, the strength of salvation, it basically goes to that faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. What's synonymous with faith? Hope. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 the stability of our times. Yeah, that's the that's the that's what keeps us firm, man. This wisdom and this knowledge keeps us firm, keeps us stable, you know. But even in uh in the times to come, you know, Jacob's trouble, man, JT time, you know, and we're we're hoping that the Lord keeps us stable, you know, in those times to come as well, you know, just having that hope and that and having that uh uh, uh that defense, you know. Uh, I got. I got this Colossians 3 and 5. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For, for it, and it's legal. it says, Mortify therefore your members is going into uh, killing off uh, your, your, uh, your flesh, basically, right? Denying yourself like we were going into earlier. Right, so it's, this these are the, this is uh, how we got to move in this in this uh, in this walk of ours, right? We can't we can't give ourselves over to every little thing that our our, our body wants to do. The scripture say, uh, uh, "I die daily," mm -hmm. so we should be crucifying our flesh daily. Mm -hmm. You know, we, not meaning that we we gotta we're gonna be in the uh, the spirit a hundred percent of the time, right? Because the Lord does give us liberties to. to to uh, relax at certain times, right? It's a balance. Yeah, it's all it's all a balance. The Lord said a uh, 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 a false balance yeah. is an abomination. Mm -hmm. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Roughly paraphrasing, right? like like being 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 too indulged in that to the point where you're going off. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we can't we feeding can't. it too much, feeding the flesh more than the spirit. Right, we can't yeah. do that. We can't do that. So, but we we we. This is, this is the fight that we have to do is feeding our feeding our spirit more than the flesh, right? Keeping our uh, spirit in that right uh, that right place. Right, because the scriptures say a uh, just man falleth seven times but rises up again, but the wicked fall into mischief. Mm -hmm. You know, we we pray and hope that the Lord keep you know whenever we fall to pick us back up, man. To keep going and to keep pushing when we fuck up. You know, say we all fall short of the glory of um, the Holy Father, roughly paraphrasing. You know, but we, but. We in this flesh, man. That's why we have the scriptures that we gotta walk in the spirit, yeah. like the, like the scripture says, man. Though we in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, but we gotta walk in the spirit. Be in the spirit. Big guy, anything else? Uh, let me grab this real quick. You got it. This is uh, Sirach. This is Sirach um, 23 and 6. It says, It says, Let not the greediness of the belly nor lust of the flesh take hold of me, mm. and give not over me thy servant into an impudent mind. Right? So this is this this is a prayer that we can pray. Right? To, to, so that the Lord keeps us in check. Right, so that we don't go to the so too far to the left or too far to the right. Right, we pray the Lord gives us that 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 uh, that uh, impu uh, that not the impudent mind, but uh, what's that? Uh, uh, can't think of the word. Uh, balance, basically balanced mind. Now it's a scripture speaking about how uh, I think it said 
it's speaking about the woman and uh, the shame faced woman. It's roughly paraphrased. I can't I can't think of the description, but that's that's uh, we we can pray this prayer right here that I just read, right? So that the world will keep our mind in the right place, right? Like right the, like the brother said, a balanced mind, right? So that we're not uh, overindulging in our flesh, All right? But that's what I wanted to grab. Um, they got anything else? Kind of Lord's will, this video is edifying. We want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh Again, we want to give double honor to the Apostle and others of the Great Millstone. We want to say Shalom to the whole flock out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity, striving their best to do us right in the eyes of the Lord. Like I said, Lord's will, this video is edifying. Until our next one, Shalom. Shalom. Abba, Abba, Abba. Abba, Abba.